Hey, I'm Matt from MasterSketchup.com, and in this video, we're going to talk about texture orientation. So I was recently watching a video uh, from Jay Bates, who is an awesome YouTuber that I follow. He typically does a lot of woodworking videos, but every once in a while, he'll show a behind the scenes of an, on how he uses SketchUp to design his projects. In this SketchUp video uh, that he did specifically, I thought was really cool because it showed not only like how to model, it showed a typical workflow where you make changes on the fly. And I thought that was really important and really cool to see how easy it is to make changes in your SketchUp model as you're going along. But the topic of this video is specifically going to be about orienting textures. So he was having trouble orienting the textures of his components and he was using this trick where you reorient the axes of the component itself in order to have SketchUp reorient the textures. So I'm going to share my tips on how to uh, control the orientation of your textures a lot more easily. So let's say you have this component and it's copied several times throughout your model. Now, if you take a texture and apply it to the outside of the component, there's no way to change the orientation of the texture. However, I do have a tip that can overcome this problem and I'll share that with you towards the end of this video. Now, the other drawback to applying textures outside of a component is none of your other components are going to inherit that texture. Now, that can be an advantage in some cases and it can be a disadvantage in other cases. If you want all of these components to be identical, then you definitely want to double click into the component and apply the texture directly to the face. So when I apply that to the face, now all of those components are changed. Now, how do we actually orient this wood grain texture uh, correctly? So in order to orient textures, you have to have the material applied directly to the face like I just showed you. So you need to make sure that you've jumped inside of the group and you can select the individual actually it's a component in this case you need to be able to select the individual faces and have the texture applied directly to that face so in this case i just triple clicked to select all and then i grabbed the texture and applied it now another little side note here is it, let's say you have an end grain texture that you want to apply to each end, right? If you triple clicked and applied this texture, it's going to override that. So instead, SketchUp actually has a built-in um, modifier key for the paint bucket tool, which allows you to, if you hold down control, you can paint all connected faces with matching paint. So in this case, since the ends of this board already have a different texture applied, by holding down control and clicking the paint bucket tool, it's going to apply that texture to all other faces in that are connected to this um, that were, in this case, uh, set with the default material. So you can see this face has the default material and all of these other faces also have the default material. So when you hold down control, it's going to look um, in everything that's connected and apply that texture. So that's just a quick way to change multiple faces at once. All right, so how do we actually rotate this texture? So when you have textures applied directly to a face, you get this additional menu, this texture menu. Now you won't see this if you're applying a texture to a group or component. It has to be applied directly to the face. So with this menu, you have the position um, feature. And with the position feature, you have a number of different pins. There's actually a lot of different things you can do here 
um, when you untoggle these, which I'm not going to go into right now. But what we're looking for is this green handle that will allow us to rotate the uh, texture. So we can rotate the texture and then click outside. And now we have this texture oriented properly. Now, how do we get the rest of these to be oriented with it? Now, you don't have to go through this process all over for every single one. You can actually sample the properties of the one you just modified. So if we go to the paint bucket tool, um, which is, by the way, right here, and you can activate it with the letter B uh, for the keyboard shortcut. If you hold down the Alt key, that's going to sample. So you hold down the Alt key and click. That's gonna sample not only the texture, but the actual texture position properties that you've overridden. So now if you go down here and we use that same trick by holding Control and we now apply that texture to this face here, it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna look through all connected faces with the matching paint. So it's going to apply that to all of those faces. And since we did this inside of the component, all copies of that component are gonna reflect those changes as well. Now, what are some alternatives to um, jumping inside of the texture position menu? because that's kind of clunky to have to go in there and rotate. Um, so if I back up a little bit, let's get these rotated back the wrong way. Now, one way of doing this rather quickly is using a free extension called Enroth Texture Positioning Tools. Now, this tool has uh, a number of quick access buttons that allow you to just instantly orient your textures um, 90 degrees to each other. You can also orient the texture to an edge. So let's say I have an edge here. I can select the edge and the face and click this button and it's gonna orient it. All right, now what if you don't wanna actually have to go through all of this to position or rotate your textures? What is the quickest way to do this? And how can you rotate textures on components without having to actually apply it to the face itself. Now the trick to doing that is creating two copies of the same texture oriented 90 degrees to each other. So if I use this material here and apply it, we can see it's oriented the wrong way. But this one here is the same image, it's just saved, rotated 90 degrees, um, and I created a material from that image. So I actually have two copies of the same image, and you can see that it's a lot easier to apply that. Um, if you're not worried about the end grain, you can just, you know, apply whichever one you happen to need at that, you know, depending on how the component is rotated. Now, there definitely are some drawbacks to this approach, mainly being that you're now gonna be bloating your model because it's saving two copies of the same image inside the model. So you gotta be careful of that if you're using a lot of images. The other thing is, you know, if you're creating a report, if you're using generate report or calculating area from your material, now you're gonna have duplicate um, entries for that material because, you know, it's, it's essentially representing the same you know, type of wood, but it is being represented in two separate materials. So that's the only drawback to doing that. But anyways, I hope you found this video helpful and it, you should definitely check out the video from Jay Bates. Um, he's, he's got a great woodworking channel and this one was actually on his vlog channel, the, the SketchUp walkthrough he did. But anyways, um, if you guys have any other questions, definitely leave a comment below. And don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.